We don't think RGB LED should be that expensive. Our goal is perfection that you can afford not to be first on the market. What's going on everybody, KG here. Today I wanna to talk to you about mini LED technology, but not just any mini LED technology. I wanna talk about the new RGB mini LED technology and where does it really sit in the marketplace with TVs in mind. And this is just gonna be really a general discussion about TV technology and how it has evolved over the years and where we're at now. And I really just wanted to do this to kind of give you my thoughts and opinions on what's going on out there. So if you guys don't know, over the weekend, IFA was happening and I think it happened last week as well. But taking a look at some information that High Def News posted on Twitter, you could see that they definitely had a lot of things coming out of this conference. Sony's head of TV in Europe said that we don't think RGB LED should be that expensive. Our goal is perfection that you can afford not to be first on the market. So that's a pretty interesting quote. That's saying that maybe Sony's looking at this as just a TV technology that they can implement in all sections of their TV lineup. And we have heard some rumblings like we're going to be maybe getting a Bravia 7 Mark II with this technology. That's just a rumor. There's nothing even confirmed on that. There's just talk out there that this could be the case. And if this is the case, I think that's a really great thing. And based on some other quotes, it sounds like Sony's really looking at this in more traditional TV size, like 65, 75. We learned that this is not just gonna be technology that is gonna be in one shape or size. It's also going to be in multiple sizes, not just 115 inch and not just in one price bracket. We saw that Hisense is gonna have a mid-range offering, and we also heard rumblings that Sony and Samsung may have mid-range offerings as well. How much are these going to be? With Hisense, I think we're gonna be looking at that mid-range category, sort of where the S90F sits. With the Sony and the Samsungs though, I really think we're looking at the higher end where the G5 and the S95F sit. So. That's a really competitive space. And that goes to the conversation is how much different does it have to be than OLED for you to want to buy it? Color brightness, maybe if that's a conversation that we can have when it gets to a certain brightness level, how nice does that color brightness look? Is it that much of a difference to sacrifice contrast? The answer is probably going to be not likely, but you really never know until we actually get our hands on the TV and compare them side by side. Like there was a difference at one point in time where I was looking at a QN90A next to an OLED, but I would still think like there's gonna be people that prefer the QN90A here. So I really think that maybe we can get back to that, but it's definitely gonna be hard to do because TVs are getting brighter in the OLED category and they're definitely getting more colorful as well. In the past, WOLED versus LCD, it was actually, you know, a conversation we had because of the brightness capabilities and the color capabilities that we were seeing out of the display. The color does seem to fade away at a higher brightness level on WOLED, where LCD does seem to maintain it a little bit better, though the actual color capability of the TV does seem to be a slight advantage for the WOLED. But with RGB mini LED, well, that's going to change completely. And now we're looking at brighter TVs overall and TVs that are going to be able to maintain color way better than WOLED could. So that's one thing where you will see an advantage there and maybe some reasons to go with it over a WOLED. So what changed over the years where OLED all of a sudden is preferred over LCD in most categories? And that's just because OLED's gotten brighter overall. And it seems like LCD TVs, while they've gotten brighter overall, they've gotten stricter with their dimming algorithms where you're going to see them kind of reduce the brightness in order to like not show you as much blooming. And that is going to be noticeable on certain scenes where the OLED will be brighter than an LCD. If you're talking about QD OLED, that's where we kind of saw the shift was with QD OLED. When QD OLED came along, that is where we saw the big change in 
in TV technology wars. We really weren't looking at LCDs anymore after QD OLED. There really wasn't a reason to because not only did you just get better color overall than both LCD and W OLED, but you also get the brightness as well. And that is where you kind of got the decision point in the past where it's like, do you want brightness or do you want contrast? Well, with QD OLED, you didn't have to choose. So this is gonna be pretty interesting because there is mid-range QD OLEDs. As you know, the S90F is a very dominant force in the mid-range category. In my opinion, there's not really a reason to pick any other mid-range TV currently. So if you're gonna have TVs playing in that marketplace, is it gonna be competing with the QD OLED? And I think that's probably a no, but it does still remain to be seen until we get eyes on the TV itself. The biggest question mark does seem to be with contrast. Is it gonna be enough? Because it's never going to match OLED. Is it going to be enough? And that's where it's going to really depend on the dimming zones and how the dimming algorithm is going to be controlled by each TV manufacturer. And historically, Samsung has done a really good job at this, and Hisense has done this as well as TCL. Sony recently has gotten way better at it, but their older mid range TVs and kind of lower end TVs did seem to struggle a little bit. So the dimming algorithms, they seem to be getting a little bit better. Better, but you know the lower and mid-range stuff from Hisense and TCL does seem to struggle a little bit there as well so how is the RGB mini LED gonna function with this dimming technology in mind how many dimming zones will it have there's a lot of question marks still to be answered with that how much contrast are we really sacrificing I think we saw a little bit of a preview with some of the higher end premium LCD TVs like the Sony Bravia 9 putting that up against the LG G4 last year I noticed that this is going to be a decision point for some people, but the contrast difference just was too much for me to even consider wanting a Bravia 9 over a G4 or recommending a Bravia 9 over a G4. There was just a huge difference in that. In the brightness difference, there wasn't much brightness difference. So if there was a bigger brightness difference, then certainly the Bravia 9 could sometimes get recommendations for people. But since the brightness was very similar, but the contrast was just so much different, and the G4 was way better in that department, that's why I personally struggle with recommending anything but an OLED TV. And I don't wanna hear about burning anymore because I don't remember the last time anybody has come to me complaining they had burn-in on their TV or they developed burn-in on their TV. And I have a lot of subscribers that would tell me if this would happen. And a lot of viewers in general that just simply don't subscribe. But if you're watching this and you are one of those that don't subscribe, please do subscribe. But that's besides the point. You understand you're probably gonna end up replacing the TV as your main TV before it even develops burn-in. So, that's why I don't really even focus on burn-in concerns anymore. I really focus on what is the technology giving you. And contrast is a hard one to get over. And so that is going to be the biggest hurdle for me with RGB mini LED is that at the end of the day, it's still LCD technology. But the color certainly is impressive. And I end this by saying we still don't even know what OLED is going to bring next year as well. But I do want to say that it's going to be a very fun year. 2026 seems to be something really different for TVs. Not only LCDs taking themselves up a notch into a new category, but maybe OLEDs are gonna take a step up as well. We'll see, it does remain to be seen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, this little short conversation that I wanted to have with you guys. I'd love to hear your opinions on this topic in the description. In the comment section, please chime in, let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next one.